is forming the prominence of your cheeks. Obviously, some people have bigger cheekbones than others, but we can all palpate the zygoma. It comes to a point at your cheeks. Now, what else do they do? They're going to form part of that side wall and what we call the floor of the orbit. When you see floor of the orbit, we're talking about the bottom of it. When you see wall, we're talking about the side. And specifically, that's going to be the lateral wall, as you can see right here, lateral wall of the orbits. Now, the zygomatic arch, as you remember, that zygomatic arch is formed by not only the zygoma, but also the connection to another bone, that being the what? Temporal. Temporal, Temporal bone via what part of the temporal bone? Arch. Zygomatic process. And I, keep, I keep repeating that because it gets really confusing because the names are so similar. Temporal bone has the zygomatic process and the zygoma has the temporal Correct, correct. Yes, that is right here. It's like they're inverse of each other. Oh, come on. Why does Alan do that to you? What is it? The temporal bone, what? That's the zygomatic process. That's what you're telling me and you Mastoid air cells are on the temporal bone in the back. And back together, they form so you know where that little bump is back here that you palpate? The yeah. mastoid process? That's yeah. right above it is where the air cells are. Okay. So it's underneath like the temporal bone? So they form the it's on the temporal bone. Okay. Mastoid the temporal air cells. Bone. And there's the cause, the cause in mastoid. Is it because it just connects that far back? It's just the name of the landmark, okay. the mastoids. Um, all, right. all right, as we always go through these, we talk about the articulations as well. What is this bone connecting to? Of course, the frontal bone, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, forming that arch, the maxilla, and of course, the sphenoid. That sphenoid connects to a lot of stuff. And when you're seeing superior lateral, anterior, posterior, that's showing you in what direction that's connecting to those corresponding bones and the articulations. I have less spillage whenever I'm holding it instead of having it there. I get to talk and I hit it with my hand, you know. Oh. Oh, this little little cups, mm -hmm. those tumblers. Nice. Don't throw it. Why is that wrong? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> What's funnier than 44? 45. So I still have a whole year left, I'll have you know. When you graduate, We're have you'll be 40. Party, right? Yes, y'all. when y'all graduate, I'll be close to 40, yes. Bo won't be here. Yes, he will. Your birthday's in May. May 27th. You're going to graduate. You'll all be out of here. Mm -hmm. So sorry, you won't see me when I'm 40. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. I'll send you a letter. It's sad. What's sad about that is I totally, I totally believe that's what's going to happen. You like this shepherd that's come every now and then, right? All right, let's go with the palatine bones. As y'all remember, guys, palatine bones are going to be in all that posterior portion of the hard palate, more so in the soft palate area. So when you stick your tongue on the roof of your mouth, you feel that hard part on the roof of your mouth, that's the maxilla. Right behind that, where your uvula is located, that softer area, that's where the palatine bones are located. But don't be deceived because the palatines also form a portion of the orbits as well because they actually extend upward because they are actually L-shaped. So they're, they have that long extension going up and that part going forward making an actual L-shape. The 
L, the lower part of the L forms the soft palate. The upper part of the L is what goes into the orbits. So that's going to be complete what we call the posterior fourth of the bony palate through the mouth. Vertical portions are going to what's going to go up and connect to those pterygoid processes of the sphenoid and also be part of the overall orbit formation as well. Specifically, the posterior medial orbit is what that's helping to form. You said the upper part of the L goes into the orbit and the lower part goes into the palate. Thank you. Yes. You're a Star Wars fan, I always call it the Palpatine bones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it always makes me think of. And Palpatine took two L's, Dooku and Anakin. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> Pretty good. Alright, so we have also the inferior nasal concha. I do not think I have that bone to pass around. Let me double check. But the inferior nasal concha are going to be very distinctive and if they extend downward through that nasal cavity, and they have a very curly scroll-like shape to them. They actually are curly. Yeah, I don't think I have those. The yellow ones in there? Hmm? The yellow ones in there? The yellow ones, yeah. I don't have that bone in here, but yeah, the yellow ones right here kind of look like two little hooks coming in the nose. Mm -hmm. There's your vomer. Here is your inferior nose, inferior nasal congee. They are right below the ethmoid bone. So remember, when we talked about the ethmoid bone, it had two distinct areas that we referred to with a similar name. We had the superior and the middle nasal congee. But make note once again, the superior and middle nasal congee are distinctly part of the ethmoid bone. But the inferior nasal congee are separated and that they are considered a facial bone. It's a really good thing to write down because people often mix those two up. When they were naming all this anatomy, they got really mean with that. It's like they should have given it its own unique name if you asked me if it's a separate bone, but they didn't. Question, Jay? This is a strange one. Bear with me. Um, when you pick your nose, is this what you're palpating? When you pick your nose, is this what you're palpating? How far are you sticking your finger up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> You're picking your brain? Like, so they bleed? He's like, I have long fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I feel like when you're getting in there, you got two holes that kind of force your fingers to the side. You know? I suppose if you stuck your finger up far enough, you'd palpate something in there. Okay. One of those balls, right? Okay. I wouldn't recommend trying that, though. I'll wait till break. He's gonna try. I'll wait till break. Don't worry about it. Okay, you can you can let us know how that goes. Uh, yeah. All right. So I come in with a bloody nose. Did, Matt, to be in the middle I did it, guys. Yeah, correct. I did it. And the inferior. The inferior is a facial bone. The separate facial bone. Thanks. You said superior and middle is what? Superior and middle nasal conchi are a part of the ethmoid bone. The inferior nasal conchi is a separate facial bone. That we're talking about right here. There's a left and a right. So they're a pair. Would you ask where they like where they form in the in this area? I'll ask what's on this PowerPoint right uh -oh. here. I said I've went as long as this PowerPoint is, I have removed the minutia and I'm focusing only on the things you need to know. Minutia. Minutia. It's a, here's your extra word of the day. Minutia. Use that on your parents this weekend or your friends. They make you sound really smart. Which language is Isn't my Nisha a nicer word for manure or something like that? Uh, <laughs> I thought it was like all that extra S. You know? Oh, Jay. No, no. It's, okay. it's a real word, my Nisha. Mm -hmm. That sounds like that. Which language? My Nisha. My what language? It's English. It sounds like French or something. Mm -hmm. It might be French. I think it's English, though. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> How do you spell it? M I N U T I A, Minutia. There's a team there? There's a team there? Minutia. Um, so, fun fact I'm sure most of y'all know this, but of course, since we're talking about the nose and Jay brought up sticking his finger up to his brain. You're welcome. 
keep that image. That's, that's <laughs> probably, I'd probably find some more hobbies. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> but never can have enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as you know, when they used to preserve bodies in Egypt, they would remove the brain through the nose. Ah. So they would go up that nasal cavity through those bones and stick a fork up into the brain, and they would scramble it around. They would hook on it and they would pull it through the nose Ooh, and put it in a jar. It. So, because they, they preserved all the organs in ancient Egypt, so they so mummified them. So that's how they'd get the brain out without cutting the skull open. They'd go through the nose, pull it out, and if you're wondering, yes, you can reach your brain through your nose if you poke far enough. So be careful with your nose picking. Try it, Jay. No, no. <laughs> um, no, you got those long fingernails. I'm just saying, don't stick those long fingernails up there. You might pierce something important. Um, so did they go underneath the inferior nasal contour or in the middle? They went through this, okay. up and behind. Okay. So does this still keep the shape? Hmm? The brain? No, you scramble it up and pull it out like a piece by piece. Pieces. Oh, they blend it. Oh. I was going to say this oh, one's wow. very small. Like a brain That's smoothie. What were the, <laughs> the extra things you said to write about? The extra things? I said just make sure you know this point right here. The other <laughs> nasal conchi are a distinct part of the F-point bowl. Whereas the inferior nasal conchi are a separated <laughs> facial bone. Inferior, inferior conchi are facial. Or facial. The superior and middle are a part of the F point as a landmark, so to speak. Do they grow out of the maxilla? Like, like how do they form? I think they're just. Are, I don't have the articulations on there. They're just articulating with the bottom of the F point bone, if I'm not mistaken. Like they're kind of coming off with the curve this way, like a little S shape. Mm -hmm. Not mistaken. Thank you, sir. Minutia is a nice word. The small, <laughs> precise, or trivial <laughs> detail of something. Yeah, so you learn some new vocabulary yes, words. Sir. There you go. And it starts with mini, M-I-N. It's, it's small, trivial detail. It's a small, precise, or trivial detail of something. Yes, it is. I told you it was a real word. He's saying that it's the details that we don't need to know. Trivial mm -hmm. is like... Correct. The superior in the middle. Well, the inferior is a separate facial bone. But is it connected to the... It is. It hangs off the bottom of it. All right. So, the Volmer Simpson here. <laughs> Vol Volmer Simpson? Volmer Simpson. Volmer Simpson. 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 That was So, the Volmer is a singular facial bone. It does not come in pairs. It is a singular facial bone. Where is it located? Underneath. Right here. Looks like that little W shape you see right there. Now that forms the inferior part of our bony nasal septum. I do have a vomer in here. Let's see. I know I saw. It. Yeah, there's the vomer. It kind of looks like a weapon too, something you could stick somebody with. But he's on a mission. You can pass that around. Hey, next time I got a clown, I'm gonna call Mr. Donahue. Yes, that's what you should have called. I really should have called Mr. Donahue. Pull up with a skull shit. He wouldn't mess with me again. <laughs> a skull shit. There you go. Don't, don't make me pull out my vomer. <laughs> Tell him that soon. <laughs> Dude, just go in there like. Mm -hmm. What's you want, just doing all this? You want me to give you a piece of my styloly process? <laughs> there, there's the threat right there. That's a, that's a, that's the guy's gonna be like, he's crazier than me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you this. Uh, 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 okay. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Thin plant of bone, helping to form that inferior nasal septum. That's the big point right there, guys. Forms that inferior bony nasal septum. Articulates with the body of the sphenoid, as just about everything else does. Articulates with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, forming that entirety of the bony nasal septum. And the posterior board is just kind of hanging free in the back. It's not connected to anything. That's old Volmer Simpson. Yes. Are all the bones in this chapter irregular? Are all the bones in the what? The this chapter? They are That's not, a but a majority are. Mm -hmm. So only the ones I have actually specified as shape, make sure you write those down, like Spino was irregular, a couple others were irregular. If I don't mention it, you'll need to know it. Mm -hmm. But would, so they wouldn't be classified like that? Like, well, or? think about the frontal and parietals are very flat. Mm -hmm. They're flat bones. I would assume all of the like cap itself or what calvaria. Mm -hmm. 
right, is those are all flat. So then facial is going to be most your facial will be irregular. Okay, because they're all unique. Then what about the what about the nasal bones? Nasal bones are the irregular, I believe. I think that's. Oh, we are talking about nasal bones. Okay. I'll go back. Sure. Next one's going to be one of the big ones we're going to talk about with a lot of anatomy we have to label. The mandible. The mandible. The we have in our head, uh, those are for blood vessels and just nerves. Like in nerves. Correct. Nothing. All right, so the mandible, guys. That's now, obviously, yeah. as we can all tell, that is the largest and densest bone of the face. It's about facial bones, not skull. We have some distinct landmarks we have to make note of. And we're looking at this from a frontal view right here. As if my jaw is facing you like this. That's what we're looking at. Can you look at the camera one more time? Like this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have the body. That is gonna be the curved horizontal portion where I'm running my finger right here, guys. We have a left and right side on that. The body is the curved horizontal portion, or this portion, if you're, you know, if you're thinking about something really hard and you put your, like Shaheen's doing right now, like I'm really thinking hard about this, you're palpating your horizontal portions. Let me palpate my horizontal portions while I answer your question. That's, no one got that joke? That was pretty good. Okay. I'm writing. You got the rami, that is the vertical portion on each side of the body, going up right here, the rami. Mandibular rami. Then we have the angle of the mandible, also called the gonion. Not the gonion, but the gonion. Make note, it has two names. We mostly use gonion, but it also goes by the name of angle of mandible. Yesterday, Ms. Lydia, she could not pronounce gonion, so I kept calling it gonion. She was pronouncing it <laughs> And then we have the tip of your chin. That's going to be your mental protuberance. Mental protuberance. And be careful. We hear the word mental. We think, oh, I'm going mental. We point to the top of our head. Mental protuberance is referring to mentum, the mentum of the chin. And you can write that down as well. Sometimes that's called the mentum. Mental protuberance or mentum, tip of your chin. That is a very distinct palpation point and one that we use for, as you guys know, a lot of your exams. That's where that... What line goes through that? Mentomiatal line, correct. Oh, they're not the same. They are not the same. Two questions. Yes. When does the synthesis join? When does it join? Is it when we're like babies in the womb? That one's pretty much almost all we fuse at birth, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you said that the mentum or the mental protuberance forms the chin. But tip of the chin. The tip of the chin? So then the synthesis would be the butt chin. The butt chin? Yeah. Sorry, what's the anatomical, what's the scientific term for that? Do you want to cleft the chin? No. Is that what it's called? The there's cleft? There's chin cleft? protuberance and there's a... Um... Protuberance is the tip of your chin. The synthesis is the fusing point in the middle. So there's a synthesis that, like if I put my finger right here, look. You can't see it on this model, but there is a invisible line going down. Just like the pubic synthesis. Like the pubic synthesis, correct. What did you say the other names of the mental protuberance? Mental. Mental. To answer your question about the cleft chin, that is nothing to do with the bone. That's just how the skin forms. Really? It's genetic. Yes. Okay. It's genetic. So the mandible is the biggest part of the face? Of the face, not the skull, the face. We're talking about the facial bones. The largest and densest bone are the facial bones. Now you see some more anatomy, we're gonna name those as well as we go forward. Of course, we have these areas near the joint space at the top. We're gonna to hit those next. Let me go ahead and go through them a little bit here because we've talked about this one already. We talked about the maxillary bones. Remember how I said your teeth are joints and they join the maxilla via the alveolar processes. Same exact thing for the mandible, also called alveolar portion. But all those little grooves you see where the teeth roots are fitting in, forming that little joint. So we call alveolar processes, alveolar processes, or alveolar portions. 
looking at the top portions of the mandible where it's connecting to our, what cranial bone does that connect to again? Maxilla. Oh, Temporal. you said temporal. Temporal bone. We have that formation of the temporal joint. We have some distinct anatomy at that joint area, starting with the mandibular condyle, which also goes by another name of condylar process, which also goes by another name of condyloid process. We'll start over. We've got a lot of names there. We have the mandibular condyle. This is this top portion right here that forms the TMJ, guys. Mandibular condyle, condyloid process, condylar process. All three are names for that same spot. Condyle, condylar, condyloid. I'm speaking our language here, but yeah. Condyle, condylar, condyloid. What are they again? That is this portion right here that helps form that TMJ joint. So it fits up into the temporal bone, the very top. Right below that, you have the neck of that condyle, the little thin portion. And as you look at this mantle from the side, we have a portion that dips down, look at that U shape. Can't see it from this angle, but I have the mandible on the side here. That U shape is the mandibular notch. Mandibular notch. Then it curves back up again into another little spike, and we call that the coronoid process. So, condylar process, coronoid process. Very easy to mix those two up, as you can imagine. We also have a coronoid process where? In the elbow. In the elbow. On what bone specifically? In the owner. Everyone say ulna. In the ulna, correct. Yes, in the ulna. The coronoid process. So remember, we got a lot of things that we reuse. And people often mix up coronoid with coracoid, but I always say noid, coid, noid. If you're going to order, noid, coid, noid. N C N. Noid, coid, noid. In that order from head to elbow. N C N. N C N. N C N. How do you spell the uh coronoid? No, the or condyloid? Yeah. Yeah. Condyloid is spelled C O N D Y L O I D. The coronoid process doesn't have um, a head or a neck or anything because it's no. one smooth. Okay. Correct, just one smooth spike. Okay, so some of these other parts, we're just going to define them a little bit further. Of course, we have that symphysis once again. That's where the halves of the mandible fuse as we age. Alveolar portion or alveolar processes, that's where the roots of our teeth connect to the mandible. So we can chew our food, of course. There's also mental foramina. I didn't mention that one. There are two little holes on each side of the body of the mandible that we call mental foramina. That's for your nerves and blood vessels to go through. There's two little holes right there, mental foramina. You can see the diagram right here. And that's showing you again kind of what I was talking about, guys. Tip of the chin's protuberance. The line going up is the symphysis. You can't always see the line, but we still label that as the mandibular synthesis. There's your coronoid again. There's your notch. There's your neck. And then your condylar or condyloid process, also called mandibular condyle. Say it again, mandibular condyle, condylar process, condyloid process. Three names are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Donnie? Yeah. So if the alveolar portion consists of spongy bone. The rest of the mandible would be just dense. compact. Compact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you see name as condyle, condyle, process, or the condyloid process? Mm -hmm. Now we have the mandibular process. Mandibular process. There's a fourth name for it. So Where are you seeing mandible, mandibular process? I thought you said uh, mandibular process. I said. Um, Mandibular notch. Mandibular notch. That part dips down. That's not the condylar. No, no, that's that's separate. That little area dipping down. That's a notch. Mandibular notch. 
do that. I'm you guess. said those three names form the same thing for the TMJ or? That area that goes in the TMJ, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything on the inside of the manual that we need to talk about? No. Yeah. Thankfully. Is that because we don't get to visualize it? I've just never seen it labeled. Okay. That's you see what I'm saying though? Like this little bump on the bottom mm -hmm. of the jaw. Mm -hmm. Then there's like I've never seen it labeled, so we're gonna leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. It's less to remember. Mm. Unless y'all wanna add some more now. No, mm. no, 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 no. You just give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> that was cute. Calls a riot in this class, Jerry. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm just yeah. messing with you. You're gonna cause a riot and you're adding all this anatomy. They don't want any more anatomy. There, I mean, there's a whole other plan. Hey, we can barely handle what we have. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I was always curious in class like that, too. But what about that yeah, part that's not labeled? I'm going to be like, quit asking questions. <laughs> Get it back. Excuse me, I think the mandible is rotated in that image. You're going to have to repeat that, huh? <laughs> is that how y'all talk to your text? No, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the last bit of anatomy there, guys, that we just reviewed. There's that coronoid process, the anterior one on top of the ramus, condylar, which is also called mandibular condyle, and condyloid process. I'm saying that again. That's what goes up into that temporal bone to form that TMJ joint. And of course, mandibular notch, concave, concave area at the top of the ramus between the coronoid and condylar processes. Is that how you spell the T and J thing? Yeah, temporomandibular joint. It just looks mm -hmm. kind of weird. Temporomandibular. Yeah. I'm kind of telling you what it is. Temporal bone and mandible. Mm -hmm. and I always say with joints, if you're unsure about a joint, it's usually found in the name of what two bones connect. I guess it looks weird because I've been pronouncing it with an A. Ah. Like tempora mandibular joint. Tempora. Man, these words just get bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, the good news is after this chapter, we talked about all the bony anatomy in the body. Okay. Is have the four of stuff which is organs. Okay. In Rev. Pro 4. We don't have to talk about teeth, right? No. Unless she went to her dental school. I'll teach you everything about that. No, Rev. Pro 4 is fluoroscopy mostly. Fluoroscopy. But the anatomy on that is a lot less because we talk about you know, digestive system, urinary system, reproductive system, things like that. Anatomy is a lot less to label. We're talking more so about procedures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Organs have a lot less anatomy, thankfully, than bones do. I have a question. So after we learn about floral, you think it would be more comfortable with floral? Because right now... That's what the summer is all about. Okay. You'll be getting a lot more of that experience, yeah. yeah. Floral is tough. And they're asking a lot of it on the registry. So we're gonna hit it really hard in Rad Pro 4. Oh, I forgot to add this one too. We've talked about this before. Hyoid bone. Y'all remember that hyoid bone, right? All the way back in semester one? It's like a mini mandible. Kind of looks like a little mini mandible. So that is that small U-shaped bone at the base of the tongue. It is an accessory bone of the axial skeleton, but not a facial or cranial bone. We still have to talk about it. So we call it an accessory bone of the axial skeleton. It's literally just floating there in space. It's not connected to anything. The only bone in the entire body, by the way, fun fact, the only bone in the entire body that does not articulate with another bone. So when someone tells you that all bones are, are connected, you have to say, well, excuse me, sir, actually, <laughs> the hyoid bone is the only bone in the human body that does not articulate with other bones, so you are it's incorrect. Like I was just about to say that you sound like Jay. <laughs> it's more nasal. <laughs> Work on. Let's try. Let's try. Like, have you ever heard that before? People say, "Well, did you know that every single bone in the body is connected, like Legos? Like every bone is connected to another bone." Actually, though, there's one exception, that being the hyoid, which is an accessory bone, and it's floating in space in your neck. So you said it's the only bone in the body that's not connected. Correct. 
has a few pieces of anatomy, thankfully not much, the greater and lesser cornu, the two spikes, greater cornu, lesser cornu, and then the main portion being the body. I think I actually have a hyoid bone in here. I saw one. Oh, there it is. A little bit bigger than you'd imagine. This is to scale. That's a little horseshoe. Pass that around. And if y'all remember way back in first semester, that's the bone I said that people will often, when they're doing autopsies, if they suspect a suicide, often that bone will be broken due to a hanging. If a person tries to hang himself, and they're a little unsure how the person died, they didn't find them hanging, they find their body, they can check to see if the hyoid bone was fractured, mm -hmm. and that's usually indicative of a hanging. So I'd use that to size. Yes, these are all to scale. These are all to scale, yes. Emphasis on the uh, hyoid bone? There is not. It seems like there's a ridge right in the middle. Yeah, that's just all body. Free. Yeah. All right, I'm just showing you one more time, guys. This is the same picture from before. Show you that TMJ joints. Remember, that's the formation, or that's the union of the mandible to the temporal bone. There's that condyle we just talked about, or that condyloid process. Fitting up into that TMJ, fitting up into that temporal bone. And there is some cushioning there. That's a little synovial joint, or what we call articular disc, to help cushion that area. And usually when people get locked jaw or their jaw gets dislocated easily, it's typically due to that cushioning not being there. And some people, their jaw pops really bad. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the bones rub up against each other. It can actually erode that area and cause a lot of issues. Very common problem some people have. And that's showing you if we can do a TMJ x-ray, kind of what it looks like. I know I few people have done TMJs. Um, I saw two Panorex uh, this week. Oh, Panorex. Yeah. So this is, a, this is not a Panorex. This is a regular x-ray of TMJs. And okay. you can look very closely. And there's that condyloid process. That's what it looks like when the mouth is open. Because you see how the condyle goes forward. Leave that little space open. When our mouth is closed, it fits into that notch nicely right there, as it should. So we do an open mouth and closed mouth view to make sure that joint's working correctly. Yes? What's the angulation on this? The angulation on this, I believe it's 15 to 20 degrees, I'm not mistaken. The TMJ looks pretty big. It does, yeah, it is elongated. See how it kind of stretched out? Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, is the, so if the tube is angled, the patient's lateral, right? They're in a, like an axial lateral, kind of like a mandible axial. Oh, okay. There's a head so tilt going on. So you wouldn't see the uh, cella thoracica in this either? No, you would not. Okay. It's like an oblique view, okay. essentially. Is there any other anatomy that we can find in the TMJ view? As far as a TMJ x-ray, all you need to know is where that condyle is and where that joint is. Okay. If you were to get a question on your registry, they would say which one's the open mouth, which one's the closed mouth view. Simple as that. On, if they're showing you like an image of it. So they wouldn't say like, show me the ethmoid sinus or... Oh, they will. Not, not, saying, in, this, not in this x-ray. That's though. what I'm saying. Because so it's a TMJ x-ray, that's the only star of our show right there. Okay. And then... It fits that, into that fossa when it's closed. Correct. When it's open, it, it goes forward, anterior. Oh. And what happens with locked jaw is it'll go forward too much and kind of get stuck up here. Mm -hmm. In that corner? In that little corner, yeah. Yeah. I was going to mouth hurt when I talk about that too. I can't imagine that. That's one of my, one of my, like, I don't get squeamish, but something about jaws and teeth gets me. Like, I cannot handle jaws and teeth. All the things I can look, I can look at blood, guts, whatever. Jaws and teeth, like, gives me, like, chill bumps. Like, when I go to the dentist, I'm, like, sitting there gripping the side of the chair the whole time. I get so much anxiety at the dentist. I'm sitting there picking at my teeth with that little pickaxe. I call it a pickaxe. I know some people are like, oh, I love getting my teeth cleaned. It feels so good. I'm like, it needs torture. They have very sensitive teeth, too. So I, I, I'm like white knuckled the whole time in the dentist chair. I, I start sweating talking about it. I hate the dentist. Can you, can you identify the calvaria here? The what? The different, like, where would the temporal bone be? Where would the temporal right here? Yeah. Front to oh. here. 
Wait, 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 where'd you say? Where'd you say frontal parietal? Frontal parietal. Oh, okay. Temporal. But you don't have to worry about that in that X-ray. And then that space behind the TMJ, that's the masculine air cells that we talked about. Yeah, right here. Okay. There's the air cells. All right, guys, good time for your first break. It's right at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I used to have so much fun with it as a kid, <laughs> playing with white owl. Like put all stuff and scrape it off. Uh-huh, yes. Oh, the acanthium. Huh? The acanthium. Does, isn't that a, doesn't that fuse together, or is that just a spot on the... It's just a joining those two bones, but it's not like a synthesis. It doesn't, it doesn't fuse together? And they fuse together, but they don't classify it as like a synthesis. That's what you're referring. And the glue, too, when you put the glue on our hands. Yeah, you peel it off. Yeah. yeah. Look, I'm peeling my skin off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when, we were, when we were kids in school, we didn't have all these fancy devices. We had to play with glue. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> all we had was glue to play with in school. Or our TI-83 plus calculators. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those? There's <laughs> knowledge in a snack right there. You have to play with the calculator and get a All right, let's start looking at some of this on x-rays, guys. Because you're probably wondering, how does all this fit onto x-rays? Well, let's start going through it. And before I leave today, I will send you guys some practice sheets so you can start practicing with this on your own as well. Okay. So let's look at this x-ray right here. And what we're looking at is a PA called well skull. Mm -hmm. Why do I know it's a PA called well skull? Well, skull equals cranium. And how do I know it's cranium? Well, look what all is cut off here. All I see is a big globe at the top of this person's head. When we do a skull x-ray, we're not interested in the facial bones. And I always tell you, like, tip of the nose up, tip of the nose up. There you have it. Let's look at some of our anatomy. Now, look very closely. You might need to look at the TV screens for some of these sutures because they can be difficult to see. But there's our sagittal suture, which, how's that go? Straight across the top of our head, connecting what? What's the sagittal suture connect? Two parietal bones. Two parietal bones. We have this, of course, this big, large area on top being the frontal bone. If I was pointing on the side right here, what cranial bone is that? That's a, the right parietal. This would be the left parietal. Let's look at this. We haven't hit sinuses yet, but sinuses can be very great or very dark. This is going to be our frontal sinus in this cavity right here. But what about, oh, I wish that board wasn't there. I was like, what about that little spike coming up? You see it? Do you see how long the crystal galley looks on this x-ray? Mm -hmm. It's because of the way that we have the head situated combined with that angulation. You guys learned Caldwell this week, mm -hmm. and you know when we apply that angulation, that will stretch out that crystal galley. The crystal galley is located on what, though? That's the the ethmoid bone. It's the top of the ethmoid bone. Right? It looks very small on the bone because we have that angulation. See, so <coughs> it's a big so it's a unicorn horn a little bit. They say zero degrees. This is it. That, that's incorrect. This is angle. Yeah, that's that's incorrect. This has an angulation because on the skull you always apply an angulation. Mm -hmm. On the sinus you do not. But we're not the sinuses yet. So the All right. Radiologictechnologist.com is incorrect. You gotta be careful of those sources. I should be more careful than that. Even like things like radio <laughs> they get stuff wrong. You gotta be really careful. Now, ethmoid bone is in this area. There's the ethmoid sinus. You can see F dark. Can you see the orbits? Yeah. Very easy to see the orbits, yes? Yeah. Yes. Now that top margin of the orbit, what is that called? Yeah, yeah. There's your superior yeah. orbital margin. That's part of what cranial bone? Frontal. The frontal bone, the frontal bone. If we go down here, a little harder to see with that bottom border. Peach. Inferior Peach. margin, Peach. inferior orbital margin. Oh. We have the superior and the Peach. inferior. Oh, I'm coming back to peaches. Okay. Peaches, okay. Rich. peaches. Peaches Ridge. Peaches, peaches Ridge. Oh, peaches Ridge. Oh, <laughs> now, this x-ray, the, the positioning is not optimal because if you have an optimal skull, this Peaches Ridge is going to be in the lower one third of the orbit. You can see it's a little bit high here. But if you look closely, you see this line going across. You see this line going across. That's the Peaches Ridges. And the Peaches Ridges are found on what bone? Sphenoid. Temporal bone. Temporal, Temporal bone. This is the left petrous ridge. This is the right petrous ridge. Now, obviously, not everything's labeled here. What else can we label, though? Well, what about the structure coming down right here? That's the horizontal plate. So I'm glad you said that, and you are partially correct. When it comes to a model, yes, 
that would be the perpendicular plane of the ethmoid bone. When it comes to an x-ray, we refer to this entire structure as the bony nasal septum. Bony nasal septum. That's formed by the perpendicular plate and the Bomer Simpson. Remember? The Bomer. Is, is it perpendicular plate or horizontal plate? Because I feel like I've read it. Perpendicular plate is the most common used word for that. Okay. Perpendicular plate. What else can we label? Let's see here. You can see the frontal suture. Frontal suture. Or the, I'm sorry, the chromal suture. The chromal suture? suture? Yeah. yeah. Barely right here, yes. You yes. see that? It's not over here? That's right, that's the chromal suture. Right there. It's not. I thought it's. That's the lambdoidal suture. Oh, in the back? Yes. That's why it looks like a triangle? Correct. Lambdoidal suture makes a triangular shape. Coronal crisscrosses with the sagittal up here. Okay. Oh, because yes. it's tilted. Yeah, so it's tilted. It would be higher up. You said the perpendicular plate and the creates bony, bony nasal septum. And that's how we're going to label on x ray. Yes. Let me move forward here. Let's look at this x ray right here, guys. This is what we call an AP axial Towns x ray. Way back when we started, I called this the alien baby head because it looks like an alien head. It really stretches out that cranium. There's another skull x-ray. In fact, we only typically do a talons on the skull, most commonly. Now, what are we looking at? Well, of course, we have our parietal bones on the side. Think about how our head's situated. When you do a Caldwell, you're sitting with your back against the IR, correct? And your head slightly down. Y'all yeah. remember this? Yeah. So your occipital bone is touching the IR, ideally. Therefore, that's one of the stars of our show. On this x-ray, we're focused on the occipital bone. Don't put frontal bone, even though it kind of looks similar to that. You gotta think about how you're positioning. PA Caldwell, the frontal bone's in contact with the IR, therefore, that's one of the stars of our show. AP axial towns, I'm sitting with my back to the IR, back of my skull's touching the IR, therefore, now the star of my show is that occipital bone. How else can I know it's the occipital bone? Well, look at this big round structure right here. What is that, guys? Where is the foramen magnum located? The on the occipital bone. So when we do this x-ray, we're not only looking at the occipital bone, we're looking at the foramen magnum, and we're looking at portions of the sphenoid bone through the foramen magnum right here. Which parts am I talking about? Well, y'all remember that dorsum celli on the back of the sphenoid? The yeah. At the back of the saddle. Here's that dorsum celli. Here's that posterior conoid process. If I was to like look down into there, that cella tersica would be curving down. Trying to not confuse you here, but that was go down that would be your cellar but you can't see cellar tersica on this x ray. We only see the back of the sphenoid through the foramen magnum. Specifically, we see the posterior, posterior conoid process and the dorsum celli. Now, if I went down a little bit more, that'd be where old clivus is, but we can't see clivus because occipital bone is still blocking that. What else? It always goes back to those petrous ridges. They kind of look like wings coming off the side here. Petrous ridges are found on what again? Temporal. Temporal. Temporal bones. So we have a left petrous ridge. We have a right petrous ridge. Why are we so focused on those ridges again? It tells us that we have positioned correctly. If I have positioned correctly for an AP axial Towns x ray, not only do I see the conoid process and the dorsum celli through the foramen magnum, but I see coming off the sides, my petrous ridge is almost like wings on the sides of the foramen magnum. It almost looks like a snitch in Harry Potter. You know, the ball with the wings? There's the ball. Yeah, there's the wings. Oh, yeah. About a Harry Potter fan out there in the audience? Yeah, I have one. I have a key. That's how I'm going to draw that. Yeah, with the wings. Is that making sense so far? Actually, on this x ray, not a lot to label despite everything we learned. We're focused on the stars of our show, which is our occipital bone and sphenoid through the foramen magnum, and of course, our petrous ridges on the sides. Jay, question? Um, they're not necessarily the star of the show, or I guess anything near it, but where are the orbits? You, your orbits are they're actually inferior. They're superimposed, but they're like way down here. Okay. Oh, by the way, I can actually have you label something else here, guys. Look down towards the bottom of that picture. We have two little bucket handles on the side here. I've said bucket handle before, what are those? Those are zygomatic arches. That's your zygomatic arches, and how are the zygomatic arches formed? The temporal bone. Correct, the temporal bone and the zygomatic bone. Now, we label them separately on a model. On an x-ray, once again, we're simply gonna label this as a zygomatic arch. So I'm not gonna be like, well, this portion is the malar, this portion is the temporal, no. This is just a zygomatic arch, simple as that.
Okay. Jay? And you said the dorsum cellae and the talatosica. The way that we're viewing it, is it like, like that? It's like if you have the sphenoid ball you're looking at from behind through that frame magnum. So remember, in front of this dorsum cellae is where the cell is. Mm -hmm. And of course, then there's the anterior colloid process and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking from behind. So it's a cup-like structure, right? It is. So we're seeing it from this side as, yeah. as opposed to this. Okay, yeah. that's what I was trying to ask. Correct. What were you saying, Michael? The back and then the front. Mm -hmm. What we have here, now this one's correct. See how it says PA 15 degrees? Mm -hmm. This is a correctly done PA Caldwell skull. How do I know that? Well, go ahead and write this down once again. I always know that my PA Caldwell skull has been correctly positioned with the patient and the angulation when my pugis ridge is in the lower one third of my orbit. Y'all see that? See that ridge? Like a little wave, little wave. Lower one third of my orbit. That means that it is optimally positioned and angled. That's what I want to see. Can we see the other one in comparison to that? See how high they are? Yeah. So is that still a Caldwell or is that This is still a Caldwell. What this, I, w I don't like how they did this. This person's head was positioned incorrectly. They didn't have the correct tilt, I'm sorry, the, the correct tilt on the head. Mm -hmm. Here it is, combined with the angulation. That's ideal, that's what we wanna see. So we can name some of the things we already hit, guys. Looking at the sutures, which you can see a lot clearer on this x-ray. There's that sagittal suture. There's your lambdoidal. On the sides, of course, are our parietal bones. Right here is the frontal bone. Remember, once again, what's in contact with the IR? That's how you tell the difference between the frontal and the occipital. What sinus was that? Frontal. It's already labeled for you. What's that little unicorn spike coming up? It's the galley. What about the top part of the orbit? Superior Superorbital margin. What about the bottom part of the orbit? Infraorbital margin. What cranial bone is on the side right here? Temporal. temporal. So that's the right temporal bone. That's the left temporal bone. But specifically on the temporal bone, what's that little thing hanging down there? Mastoid tip. There's that mastoid tip that you palpate back here. What are these little air pockets? Mastoid air cells. Mastoid air cells. What about this structure right here? The septum. Bony. Bony nasal septum. If I want to be extra evil and mean, Bomber. what part of the bony nasal septum is this? Bomber. What part of it is this? Perpendicular, Perpendicular plate. Perpendicular plate. The ethmoid. Mm -hmm. What about these two dark cavities here? Ethmoid air cells. Ethmoid sinuses. 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 Ethmoid sinuses. Yeah. And what about these little wavy lines the here? The petrous ridges, which are found on the what? Temporal bones. Temporal bones. I want y'all to make sure you know that. Petrous ridges are on the temporal bones. How, how do you differentiate between sinuses and air cells? So, when it comes to the face and the skull, the only air cells you will ever label are the mastoid air cells. Every other air cavity is going to be a sinus. Okay. Even though you have ethmoid air cells, we're going to refer to that area as ethmoid sinuses. Good question. Um, Wait, where are the ethmoid sinuses? They are right here. The eyes. Okay. Right here. Those little dark spots. Mm -hmm. Can we visualize the superciliary ridge? Yeah. Superciliary ridge is going to be about right here, but you will not see it on the x-ray. So it's not those, it's not like <coughs> denoted by that dark space in the middle? Like, is that well, where it starts? Like this here? Yeah. That's the That's border the of the frontal sinuses. So from here then? It would be about right here, but you're not going to see it on an x-ray. Okay. <laughs> It's on a model, yes, but x-ray, no. The pictures ridges in the lower one third. Lower one third of the orbit, yes. That's how you know their position correctly. Right? Exactly, exactly. Are we able to visualize foramina? That's 13 degrees cross. Foramina, no. no. On this one, no. Certain views, yes. This particular one, no. So, I'm trying to say anything major here. Can we do it again? Do what, again? the whole thing? Yeah. So right. Like, do stuff it. that's not labeled though, so we can like yeah, practice on hot spots. Like Frontal bone, okay. parietal bones, sagittal suture, lambdoidal suture, crystagallia, the ethmoid, supra, yeah, lambdoidal, like that triangular shape. Think of the lambda. No, because it was in the front, so I have to 
if we saw the, if we were to see the coronal suture in this view, which we can't really see, the coronal suture is going to be up here. But you can kind of barely see it. Frontal sciences. Frontal sciences. Bony nasal septum, specifically perpendicular plate ethmoid, followed by the bulmer. We have the left and right petrous ridges of the temporal bones. Ethmoid air cells left and right. Mastoid processes left and right. I want to be even neater. What part of the mandible is this? That's the ramus. Very good, Gene. That's the ramus of the mandible. Right there. What about those little bumps on the teeth there? Uh, alveolar processes. Alveolar processes of the maxillary bones. Left and right maxillary, by the way. Oh, you can't really so see very well, but it's there. We're going to have to label it like that. Left of versus the, right. Of the maxillary and then of the mandible. Well, you're, it's going to be mostly hot spot, but okay. if you were to write it out, that's how you would write it out. Where yeah. is it again? What? The alveolar processes? It's just right in between. Right here. This is, your, the of the teeth. this is your maxillary bones right here. You see the teeth, these little, like basically where you see the roots of the teeth, that's your alveolar processes. Is the gonfoses the portion where they're actually like, like the, the level between? The that's basically where the roots are hooked into the gums. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then you can even see the bottom of the occipital bone here, guys. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. That's the bottom of your occipital bone. Is that called the occlusal plane? Or the, just no. the bottom? No. Okay. So. And that's the major anatomy on that one, guys. We've learned a lot of anatomy, but depending on what view we're looking at, you're only looking at specific parts at a time. You're not looking at like everything at the same time, but specific areas. Whoever, hand raised. Earlier you said something like right here that comes from the temporal bone, and it's just called the septum. Wait, so there was like something you said it was, it was it the man or something? Condole? It was like a, you said a hook. Right here on the side. Oh, the, the mandibular notch. The mandibular notch. That's what you're referring to? Yeah. The hood? Right. The a little lost on that one. <laughs> right. My brain's tired too. <laughs> Can you point out the interior? The what? The right here. The would be about right here, but we're not. So I'm glad you brought that up. When it comes to these junctions, once again, you're only going to do that on models, not x rays. Sutures, so you can see them very clearly, we will label sutures. So you wouldn't ask us even as like a bonus to guess the area of... I guess I'm feeling extra evil, I could. I mean, that's not really evil. You shouldn't have given me all these ideas. You know, that's pretty hey, good. Yeah. So the coronal is all the way on the top. Jay is like loving this chapter. I'm trying to get it's all the way on the top. The coronal suture is all the way on the top? It's, it's basically, you can barely see it. It's right here. Right here. Can you point to the vertex? The, the vertex is the very tip top of the skull. That's a good one to name. I forgot that one. Parietal so the top eminence. of the skull is the vertex. Parietal eminences. Parietal eminences is just in the sides right here. It's the widest portion. But how big is a, your hotspot going to be on that? How big is my hotspot going to be? I mean, for John's sake, you know. Huh? Because he's always, <laughs> for John's <laughs> sake, he's always on the edge. <laughs> You want to throw you on the bus like that? Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. He always talks about it. I mean, if I was doing the parietal eminence, I would probably be like this right here. Okay. I'm not going to be like a little thin sliver or anything, if that's what you're wondering. That's what I was wondering. The only one where I'm going to really tighten it up, guys, because this is a vital one you have to know for your registry, are these peaches ridges. It's going to be a thin margin. I'm not going to like mix anything down here. You need to be on that line for the peaches ridges. Everything else, you know, I'm gonna be fair. So the Petrus Ridge is more, can you, can you do that again? So if on I the, was drawing the box on the test. Uh, can you do it on the other ridge? side? So that, because the camera? Yeah. If I was drawing the box for Petrus Ridge, it'd be like this, along that line. If you're down here, Yeah. that's, that's way off. You gotta be on that ridge. Reason being, that's one of the ones they're guaranteed to ask you to be very accurate on that. So that little, Circle thing is right on top of that. Circle thing. Uh, so, like here? Yes. It's like right on this little circle thing is right here. Yeah. This is our Petrus Ridge. It's literally the ridge. The line. The line. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Thing. I thought it was, it was thicker. Like than the line mangled up. Oh above yeah. It? Yeah. Okay. It does. It does. Okay. And while you were doing that, I saw something else we can actually label if we want to be really specific. Like don't want to be like one of the, the lateral. Evil. Uh, <laughs> all this question. 
Just like, like, no. You're laughing. What this is. Oh, you don't have to be the first one to change. Those is, are. Is that the le lesser wing? Oh, it's kind no, of. Those I are. Small, I small lesser wings are here. That's, 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 the, the, that's also the speed generator, so that's the noise. Of the speed noise. Yes. Are you going to give us some practice ones like you did? I think I have an old practice one I can send you. So, yeah. so you said that's the greater wing? So the lesser wing. The lesser wing? The lesser wing you can't see, but they're about in this area right here. So, so then the one you point to is a greater? Okay. I guess this Left greater, right greater. So, what, um, the lacrima? The lacrima bones are here, but we can't see them in this view. There, you, you said the teardrops. Like the, so what are those? Are those just air cells? Those are ethmoid sciences. No, but beside those. Here? It looks like a tear. You're way overthinking that one, guys. No, but like, do you not? Oh, it's about this right here. That's what I'm saying. Like, that looks That's like just, the, that's just anatomy superimposed. It's, okay. it's not anything to smith it though. Because I was like, you, you kept saying it as like a teardrop, and that's what I was saying. It like, does, but no, we don't typically label that on that view. I've never seen it labeled on that view. And right TMJ? You can't see the TMJ in this view. But we're going to do another one where we can. What's at the level of the, or is that the EM? On the right side? Uh, yeah, just lateral to the orbit. Yes. Yeah. What is that? EAN? Yeah. Looking at the TV screen, I can't see. Because there's, there's two. That's just the side that's involved. You cannot see, unless the head is tilted incorrectly, you cannot see the TMJ's in this view. Yes. Is that the same X-ray? That is the same X-ray. It is just ugly. More stuff labeled as a little more blurry. And so they had motion. So was that motion? It's just a bad image. Here we go. That's what I was going to get to. So you said on the images Remember, it's going to look a little bit different on an x-ray versus the model because the way we're moving the face, it changes the shape. And then the angle is going to change the shape as well. So keep that in mind. All right, lateral view, guys. Here's one of the ones that gets people bad right here. Any of our lateral views. Why? Because look at how much stuff we can label. When it comes to labeling the majority of the stuff we've learned, these lateral views are going to show the most. So let's go through it. This is a lateral cranium or lateral skull x-ray. How do I know it's a lateral cranium or skull? Well, I, it's lateral. It's lateral, but I see the cranium. I'm cutting off the face. There's still some face here, but I'm cutting off most of the face. So. Is Let's there, go through it. It might be easier to look on the TV screen because this looks a little blurry to me. Do you want me but, to turn out the lights? Yeah, would it help turn the lights out? Maybe, yeah. Um, is like the, is, are they rotated slightly? Or is that just the natural magnification? Okay, this is good. That's not rotated. I think that's just the quality of the image. All right, starting with the front, guys. Frontal bone, you can't miss it, right? Yeah. Now look closely. We do see a suture moving right here. That's going to be our coronal suture. Does everybody see the coronal suture? Yes. Very top of the head. The vertex. The vertex. The vertex. I'll come back to these in the middle, but I want to keep going back. Here's our parietal bone. Here's our occipital bone. Back here. I'm going to come back to these, by the way. Now look closely. That's where we're going to find our lamboidal suture, which is located between occipital and parietal and temporal. See. It's a little bit wide out here, guys, but I think on the TV screen it looks a little clearer. Yes. This arrow is pointing to a very distinct <laughs> opening. That's going to be our EAL. 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 This line down here is pointing to that air cell area we talked about on the temporal bone. That being the mastoid air cells, or also sometimes called the mastoid region, but I want you to label it as mastoid air cells because that's what they're going to ask you on the registry. That's the terminology they're going to use. Going to the front here. We see our maxillary sinus. We're going to come back to those because we haven't hit sinuses yet. Also, our sphenoid sinus, which is always found directly under the cella turcica. Over here, y'all remember that cribriform plate we talked about? Yeah. On the ethmoid bone? Mm -hmm. We have two distinct lines right here. And the way you find these, by the way, is you locate your frontal sinus first. Does everyone see your frontal sinus? Yes. That big bubble on the frontal bone. Mm -hmm. Right behind that frontal sinus, you have two distinct lines. 
The one on the bottom is the cribriform plates. The one on top is what we call the orbital plates. So orbital plates, cribriform plates. I didn't black out some stuff you didn't need to know there. But looking again at the middle now, here is the money right here, guys. That sphenoid bone. We have this area dipping, which is of course the cella tersica. The front part, it's like a little spike, is the anterior conoid process. The back part of the spike is the posterior conoid process. Right behind it is the dorsum celli first. And as we go down a little bit further, that's the clivus. So we'll do that again. So DC. Sphenoid bone, sphenoid sinus. This is the money. That's the central portion. I mean, all this is important, but this is a really big one to know. This area where the cell tersica is, in order, anterior to posterior, we begin with the first spike, that being the anterior colon process, dips down to the cell tersica. Y'all see the cell tersica, how it curves? Yes. Yeah. Comes back up to the posterior colonoid process. We move behind it to the dorsum celli, and then right below is clivus. Is it making sense? We good? Not as scary as it looks when you break it down. It really isn't. We okay? I don't see the anterior. Look on the TV, it's easier to see because there's a little bit of a small area. If you look closely on that TV, you can see those distinct parts from front to back. And once again, how do we check that this is a true lateral skull? We look to that cell to make sure there's that good, distinct, cup like shape. Mm -hmm. And it's not got that kind of rotated look to it. To rotate, it means it had been tilted incorrectly. So if I was looking at the skull in the um, AC position, right? And you want to go with the shape, would it be like that? It kind of looks like that, yeah. right. Exactly. That's so good. We okay? Yeah. yeah. Now there's a closer view if you still can't see that area, guys. This is, a, this is an actual dedicated Celeturska view we're looking at. Now, careful because I reversed the side. This is a left lateral. This is a right lateral. You see how it shifted the sides? There went, yes, yes. you see that? Yes. So, we're, here's our sphenoid bone with our sphenoid sinus found in the middle. Let's start from the front and move back. Anterior colloid process, the first spike. The cup is the Celeturska. The second spike on the back is the posterior colonoid process. We curve down to the dorsum celli, and then a little further down is the clivus. Are we still seeing that okay? Does that make it a little easier to see? You have another, do you have the left side? Um, this view, no, but the previous x-ray was the left you side. look at it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, why is that cell turn going to be so important? What, what's it house? The pituitary gland, gland, which is the what of the body? The main, main master. The master, the master gland of the body. The there you go. I knew you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's it called? Like an abbreviation? Mnemonic? Mnemonic for this one? Yeah. A sassy peach doesn't care. A sassy peach doesn't care. That's pretty good. A sassy peach doesn't care. Pretty good, pretty good. I like that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna move forward. Let me see here. Let's look at this one again. What is that? That was something I didn't realize had a big watermark on it. So, but actually, let me stop because you can see this area really well again, guys. This is the this is the opposite side. So, what part is this? What is this? Here. Right below. Right below. Let's just hit it all. Let's hit all. We got the whole skull we can work with here. Okay. What sinus is this? Sphenoid. What sinus is this? We have two lines behind it. The one on top is the orbital orbital plate. Below is the cribriform plate. Let's go up here. What cranial bone is this? What about this? Here. What suture is this? What is this? Yeah. How about this area here? Mass, 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 mass. What about this portion of the mandible? Ramus. This is the 
Mm-hmm. Oh, that right there. The angle. The gunion. Gunion or the angle. What about those little ridges on the main one? Alveolar processes. Our groove on is doing good. Okay. What about this process? Condyloid, also called condyloid, 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 condyloid. All of the above. All the above. <laughs> what joint is formed here? T and J. What about this dip down here? The mandibular notch. What about this spike here? The coronoid process. What you also worry about? You're not going to sound far. <laughs> not so bad, right? This is a right lateral. So, this is a right lateral. Let me give you some hard ones oh, now. Oh, just this. Yeah, it is. What is this little point right here? The anterior. No, uh, uh, it's uh, where the amphitheon is located, but it's based on a distinct piece of anatomy. Oh, the bulbar. Not the bulbar, it's on the maxillary bulb, remember? Right it's here. It's not the anterior. You're almost there. The anterior nasal spine. Anterior nasal spine okay. of the maxillary bulb. There you go. What else can I get you with? What about that back there? The ion. The, 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 the exterior. Stadium. The ineon. The ineon. Correct. Which is that bump in the back of the head. What is that thing there? I hope you know what that is. Well, this is a cervical C1. What's its, what's its other name? Well, atlas. 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 What about the back of those? Oh my, I don't know. Spinous or bifid tips. Bifid tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm totally laughs> Good job. Good job. Hyoid <coughs> is the tip of it's right there. You can barely see it. Okay, let's go to the left side. Let's review. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all are doing excellent. I don't know what you're worried about. Is this a PA? This is a PA. What is this? This is cranial, cranial, cranial bone. Oh. Frontal. On the sides up here are the. Oh, oh, by the way, top of the skull on both is. Vertex. 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 What are these little tips down here? Oh, what about, we can't really see it, but a little unicorn horn coming up. Chris the galley. What sciences are these? What part of the orbit is this? The superior orbital. Super orbital margin. The bottom is the inferior Maybe sciences are? The structure is? The perpendicular plate of the nasal section. Bone is don't pick your nose too deep. Mm-hmm. Um, is it yeah, or my bone marrow from the other plates. So the bony nasal septum is that whole thing? This whole thing is the bony nasal septum. Correct. Mm. Oh, because we can really see it on this one. Look at those bat wings. See them? Oh, the greater wings. The greater wings of the sphenoid. The greater wings of the sphenoid. The features where? You can see the left and right. I yeah, was getting the there, but ridge. y'all see the peaches ridges without me pointing them out. Yeah. Y'all see the ridge. The line. There's the left. Oh. There's the right. You see it? Yeah. yeah. Mastoid air cells. Yeah. Y'all are doing great. Y'all are doing great so far. Not too bad, right? Not as scary as it looks. Now, what can we label on this? This is back to that town's view. Let's start up here. What suture? Is this? Sagittal? Be careful. No. That's the coronal suture up there. Oh, What suture is this? Lambdoidal. If we could see it going down the middle, what suture would we have? Sagittal. What cranial bone is this? Parietal. This overall cranial bone is what? Occipital. This big hole is what? Random magnum. What are these ridges that it's pointing out? Peaches ridges. Peaches ridges. What's that? Dense. No, it's not the dense. No, we talked about we're looking at the sphenoid through the foramen magnum here. Cellophorsica. You can't see the cellophorsica. This is the back part, which is the posterior cellophorsica process. And right below that is what? The dorsum cell. The dorsum cell. It's a posterior cellophorsica process. Dorsum cell. And this one's been positioned so well and the quality's so good, we can actually see another part. Y'all see this? Mm-hmm. That's your anterior colloid process. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of those two going down here would be the cella tersica. Y'all see it? Mm-hmm. Although we don't label cella tersica here, that's where it'd be located. So posterior colloid, anterior colloid, dorsum celli. We can't see old Clivus. He's, he's hiding in the, in the woods. 
Where are those little bucket handles? They're the Mac arches. Mac arches. Very good. Very good. Doing all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Now here is the money x-ray. Once again, not only my favorite x-ray, but one of the favorite of the registry. Every single thing you see on that x-ray, you must master. And I'm actually going to stop there before we get into this, because we only have five minutes. We've got to spend some time on this one. So we will pick back up with these review images, and then we'll start finishing up orbits and sciences, and we'll be getting ready for that upcoming anatomy test. Any questions, guys? Yes. You have called it that the infraorbital rim, but it's also called the inferior. We call it the realm or the margin. So it's called it called realm or margin. So infraorbital infra margin or inferior orbital rim. Correct. All right, guys, good job. Yeah. Good job. Yes, John. The only anatomy left to learn is the maze and bolt, right? We are. We hit maze and bolt. So we hit everything. The only ones left, we've got to talk about the structure of the orbits a little bit. And then we got to talk about the sinus cavities. Sinus cavities. Yes. It was. John, you are getting it. Stay on top of this, guys. You've got to stay on top of this. Which one? This one. I'm just coming out. Sure I'm going to find those practice images I can see you right now as well. The only thing I'm missing is the water jar. I'll get that in the next one. Don't say I don't care about y'all. Because I really don't. I apologize if I missed anybody. What am I going to do? Mr. Uh, Dunn, you say you said when you see the long line, uh, that's the bony spectrum, yeah. and it's the uh, yeah. perpendicular plate spectrum. of the nasal yeah. nasal spectrum that creates the bony. Yeah. Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>